All right, so we got everything done. Um, normally, at this point, you would be taking your straps and attaching them to your base here. But because I am changing it up and trying something different, I'm just gonna fold these and put them to the side for now. And I don't know if you caught it, but while I was stitching, what I did was I just did two stitches on the perimeter and then I did two right down the center, run on either side of that fold there because these are just gonna be single layer straps. Ouch. All right, get this out of the way. And then so what we're gonna do is we need to attach our pocket here and stitch it down. And then we need to stitch down our little strap holders. And so these are what's gonna go here because I'm just gonna try a new configuration with the straps because I think I can make them adjustable. As the pattern is written, they're not quite fully adjustable from what I remember. It's been a while since I've made this pattern, but I do remember that if you had the straps fully extended, then that's that's how long it was. Um, I don't know, sorry, words are not really working. Anyways, I'm changing up the straps. You'll see, we'll see. Right now I'm just gonna put a little piece of double stick tape along the inside of my strap connectors here. And then I'm just gonna clip them on the sides here. I'm gonna center this. There we go, and there we go. Probably if you want to, you could make these a little bit longer so then they're not, cause like when we sew, it's they're just gonna make them really short. I don't mind that. So I'm gonna leave it as is. And now for this guy, I'm gonna switch all of these clips so that they, so that the, the curved part of the clip itself is facing up. So that way I can lay it exactly where I need it to be. And I know that it's in the right place. This bobby pin almost took me out when I was top stitching, so taking that off. All right, so again, I am doing two and a half inches from the sides here and one inch from the bottom. Is that one inch? And then these little sew tights are what's gonna really be helpful to hold this pocket in place since my clips won't reach. Just take one of these bad boys, slide it underneath, and then there we go. Same thing here. And then now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna double check my measurement. One inch, one inch. Yep, that's perfect. So the whole point of this is that we want the pocket to be the same height as our zipper overlay. Um, and let's see, I'm gonna actually stitch this down and be done with this before I move on to finishing this. So I'm gonna go to the machine and stitch down and around here, and then we're gonna stitch these guys down. But before we go, I do want to start the process of my edge paint since this will take a while to dry. I want to be able to attach these whenever I get to that point. I won't have to wait to finish the bag. So I'm just evening up all of my edges here. There we go. Oh, 
I didn't burn it first and there was a, it's a little chunk of fuzz under there. Hopefully with enough base coats that will just blend right in. You won't even see it. you at the machine. Okay, so now we are ready to cut out the inside of this zipper overlay, which if you've made this pattern before, then you know this is an addition. Lens does not have that written in the pattern. So I am at this point just kind of free, what's the word I want? Freestyling, I am freestyling. So just using her pattern as a jumping off point, I am adding my personal touches and making this bag slash pattern my own, which as a gentle reminder to all of you makers out there, that's what every pattern is. You know, if there's something about a pattern that you love and then there's something about it that you hate, just skip the part that you hate. You don't have to follow patterns to the T every single time. This is your creation so you can make it your own. And so now what I'm doing is I'm just trimming out the inside of the zipper overlay to expose that opening there. And then now what I'm gonna do is inlay a zipper. And so I'm using this really nice metal zipper tape that I got from Fabric Fun House. Um, it's a nice twill tape and then metal zipper teeth. And it has a gold tone. It's kind of hard to tell, but it's a little gold tone, but it fits really well with stainless as well, with nickel. So I'm using these olive wood poles. So it's number five zip tape and number five pull and the pull itself is made out of wood, which is just super nice material. It's nice and smooth. And so what I need to do is I need to get my zipper pull onto my zipper tape. Now, I know a lot of people are really nervous about metal teeth zippers, and for good reason. I mean, if you've never worked with one, they can be really intimidating but there really is nothing to be scared of. So you just trim it to where, to the length that you need it. And then what you do though, is you trim up to the teeth and don't cut over the metal. Obviously you're going to hurt your scissors if you do that. So you're just going to trim up to the teeth. Sorry, Drewzy's right here. She's sticking her head inside of a light to sniff the light bulb and she just looked cute. Um, anyway, so you zip it or uh, snip it up to your zipper teeth and then pull it. And then I'm going to go ahead and thread my pull onto the teeth here. And then I'm going to show you how to rip some of the metal teeth off so that you can sew it nicely. So you add your pull just like any other zipper. Being careful not to pull it off the other end, which is something I always do. So 
So there we go, now we've got it on. And so if you see, I cut my zipper tape to about the same width or the same length as my zipper overlay. So I'm just gonna pull a few of these teeth off so that I can sew all the way around my zip tape. Oops, oops, just knock those off the table. I'm just marking here, that way I know exactly where my zipper opening is. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull my zip teeth apart and using needle nose pliers, I'm just gonna pull the teeth off. See how easy they come off? And then what it does is it exposes this edge here and now we're gonna be able to sew right next to those teeth or right next to where the teeth would have been. I'm gonna pull one more. And then we need to pull the teeth off of our other side. But see, so now I have a nice wide area that I can sew over. And then on this side, you can see I made my mark right about there. So we're just gonna pull our teeth off to that mark as well. I used to work exclusively with metal zippers and I realized how much people avoided them. Um, and I would always get pre-made by the size zipper, like, or zippers. Sorry, trying to do two things at once. My words are failing me, but I would always get pre-made, like pre-sized zippers from Zip It Zipper. They have the beautiful or like most beautiful options for their zipper tape colors. And then they would have like bronze coils, brass coils, and I just love them so much. And then I started working with Zipper by the Yard and kind of abandoned my metal zippers. But I, I put metal zippers on everything for years and years and years until I got into the Zipper by the Yard. But with Zipper or Fabric Funhouse, you can get this metal zip tape by the Yard. She has all different colors. She has like charcoal, navy, gray, uh, black, and then the gunmetal gold but the gold is not like super super gold it's like a gold LaCroix it, you're like is that gold I think it is gold okay it's you know you think it is but you're not quite sure but it can go either way which I like it so I'm because I'm putting it with nickel hardware and it's gonna be fine all right so I'm just gonna burn these edges And then, just gonna test fit my zipper tape here. Because what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that the end where I pulled some teeth off is actually, like did I pull enough teeth off? And so it looks like I have to pull a couple more off this top edge because the bottom edge is lined up nicely. Okay, so I'm just going to take two more off of each side. Oh, this one's being stubborn. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some double stick tape. I'm going to stick it and try to go all the way down like a mother. Back up. There we go. So I'm going to put some double stick tape around here, the inside, so that I can stick my zipper tape in and know that it's not going to shift at all. And I normally don't, but I'm actually going to put zipper tape along these edges here, the, the short edges just because I don't want anything to move at all with these metal teeth. Because if you hit a metal tooth, you're breaking a, a needle for sure. So you just gotta be a little bit more careful and be more cognizant of where everything is laying. Okay. So 
So we want this and this side. There we go. And now we have a perfectly sized zipper for our opening here. And so before we sew it down, I need to stick the wax canvas. Um, this double stick tape doesn't usually work with wax canvas, but I think something, it'll be better than nothing. So I'm just gonna stick a couple little pieces, grab one of my pockets. Where are they? Oh, here they are. So lay it like that and fold it back and out of the way. Lay it like that. Here we go. So this is what it should look like right now. Okay, so what we need to do is we're gonna go to the machine and we are gonna stitch this zipper into place and finish off this zipper pocket here and then we'll be done with this back panel. Okay, so I am going to stitch the bottom here. Technically, this would be the bottom of my zipper placket or zipper template. Not template, what is this? Overlay, geez Louise. I'm gonna start over here, stitch down across the bottom and back up the top. And I'm not gonna back stitch at the beginning and the end because I'm gonna do that in the next step after I flip the zipper pocket down in a way. So just follow along and we'll get there. If you've ever, you know, made basically any other of my patterns, you know this process. Okay, so now from the back, we're gonna flip our lining down and away from the zipper, and then we're gonna lay this one right on top of it. And then now we're gonna stitch around that remaining top edge here, being sure to back stitch well at beginning and end to lock in those stitches that we just made on when we were sewing the bottom. So this is what it looks like. We've got it all sewn in. And then now what we need to do is finish the pocket back here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up on this top edge. And I'm gonna pull the zipper tape away so that I can catch it in my stitch line. And now I'm gonna stitch all the way around this pocket to close it off. There we go. Sorry, got a little close. And then now, here is our pocket. And the reason that I stitched it that way is so that whenever you look down into the pocket, there are no stitch lines in there. And then that just ensures that everything looks nice and clean. Otherwise, I have a pretty bad track record of uh, having like wonky stitches when I'm trying to stitch the linings. 